Hello there, it's Mr. P. On today's lesson, we're going to take a look at these literary devices. Tone, allusion, analogy, and juxtaposition. So let's get started. Let's first define literary devices. Literary devices are the typical structures used by writers in their works to convey their message or messages in a simple manner to their readers. When employed properly, the different literary devices help readers to appreciate, interpret, and analyze a literary work. In this lesson, we're going to talk about tone, analogy, allusion, and juxtaposition. I suggest watching my other lessons on literary devices too. Two kinds of literary devices. Literary elements and literary techniques. Literary elements have an inherent insistence in literary piece and are extensively employed by writers to develop a literary piece. Example, plot, setting, characters, mood, theme, etc. Instead, literary techniques are specific deliberate constructions of language which an author uses to convey meaning. An author's use of a literary technique usually occurs with a single word or phrase, or a particular group of words or phrases, at one single point in a text. Unlike literary elements, literary techniques are not necessarily present in every text. Now let's take a look at the first literary device, that is, tone. In written composition, it is an attitude of a writer toward a subject or an audience. Tone is generally conveyed through the choice of words or the viewpoint of a writer on a particular subject. Every written piece comprises a central theme or subject matter. The manner in which a writer approaches this theme and subject is the tone. The tone can be formal, informal, serious, comic, sarcastic, sad, or cheerful, or it may be any other existing attitude. Examples I want to ask the authorities what is the big deal. Why do they not control the epidemic? Is eating up lives like a monster? I want to draw the attention of the appropriate authorities toward damage caused by the epidemic. If steps are not taken to curb it, it will further injure our community. The theme of both tone examples is the same. The only way we can differentiate between them is the separate tone. The tone in the first example is casual or informal, while it is more formal in the second. Examples in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night The tone of Twelfth Night is irrelevant and bemused, mocking the self-seriousness and pretensions of the most self-deluded characters in the play. The tone of the play becomes more serious to punctuate specific scenes and provide contrast to the apparently boundless good cheer and mischief of the plot. The songs performed by Fest are romantic and mournful, representing a departure from the light-hearted tone found throughout most of the play. Now let's take a look at analogy. An analogy is a comparison in which an idea or a thing is compared to another thing that is quite different from it. It aims at explaining that idea or thing by comparing it to something that is familiar. We commonly use analogy in our everyday conversation. For example, life is like a race. The one who keeps running wins the race, and the one who stops to catch breath loses. Let's take a look at the types of analogy. Metaphor. A metaphor compares two subjects without any connecting words such as like or as. Metaphors are considered a strong form of analogy as they assert that one thing is another. Simile. A simile is a comparison between two things using the connecting words like or as. 
Simile still requires the reader to understand the similarities between two things and make new cognitive links. Allegory An allegory is a story in which the characters, images, and or events function as symbols. These symbols can be interpreted to have deeper significance and may illustrate moral truths or a political or historical situation. Parable Similar to allegory, though more condensed, a parable is a simple story used to illustrate an instructive lesson or principle. Exemplification It is the relation between a sample and what it refers to. For example, if a sign at an arboretum said oak in front of an oak tree, that tree would be an exemplification of the label. Function Writers use analogy to link an unfamiliar or a new idea with common unfamiliar objects. This makes it easier for readers to comprehend a new idea, which may have been difficult for them to understand otherwise. In addition, by employing this literary device, writers catch the attention of their readers. Analogies help increase readers' interest as analogies help them relate what they read to their life. Let's look at an example of analogy in Romeo and Juliet. Act 2, Scene 2 What's in a name that which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet? So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. Juliet is indirectly saying that just like a rose that will always smell sweet by whichever name it is called, she will love Romeo even if he changes his name. Now let's take a look at allusion. It is a literary device used to reference another object outside the work of literature. The object can be a real or a fictional person, event, quote, or other work of artistic expression. Allusions can be shorthand for adding emotion or significance to a passage by drawing on the reader's prior associations with the object. Function By and large, the use of allusions enables writers and poets to simplify complex ideas and emotions. The readers comprehend the uh, complex ideas by comparing the emotions of the writer or poet to the references given by them. Furthermore, references to Greek mythology give the magical touch to the works of art. However, it is much more difficult for modern readers to understand all the allusions in older works of literature or literature from other cultures. This is one of the primary reasons that works such as Dante's Inferno and Homer's Odyssey require so many footnotes. Let's look at an example in Twelfth Night. The English Renaissance brought about a renewed interest in classical works, namely Greco-Roman mythology and history. In Twelfth Night, Shakespeare uses allusions to mythological figures in order to characterize Orsino's declaration of love as hyperbolic and inauthentic. In Act 1, Scene 1, Orsino hopes that Olivia will someday be struck by love's golden shaft, an allusion to Cupid, the Greek god of love. Cupid's golden arrows inspired insatiable love and desire in mortals. Orsino's allusion to Cupid suggests that his love for Olivia is externally motivated and forced upon him, rather than founded on true affection. Cupid's arrows were also often considered a source of misery, especially in cases of one-sided love. Let's look at juxtaposition. It is a literary technique in which two or more ideas, places, characters, and their actions are placed side by side in a narrative or a poem for the purpose of developing comparisons and contrasts. In literature, juxtaposition is a useful device for writers to portray their characters in great detail, to create suspense, and to achieve a rhetorical effect. Function 
Writers employ the literary technique of juxtaposition in order to surprise their readers and evoke their interest by means of developing a comparison between two dissimilar things, by placing them side by side. The comparison drawn adds vividness to the given image, controls the pacing of the poem or a narrative, and provides a logical connection between two vague concepts. Let's look at an example in Romeo and Juliet. Juxtaposition is a literary device that William Shakespeare uses most commonly in his play Romeo and Juliet. We notice the juxtaposition of light and darkness repeatedly. Consider an example from Act 1, Scene 5. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night, like a rich jewel in an Ethiopsia. Here, the radiant face of Juliet is juxtaposed with a black African's dark skin. Romeo admires Juliet by saying that her face seems brighter than brightly lit torches in the hall. He says that, at night, her face glows like a bright jewel that shines against the dark skin of an African. Now, let's recap. We talked about tone, and we said that it is a perspective or attitude that the author adopts with regards to a specific character, place, or development. Allusion. It is a figure of speech whereby the author refers to a subject matter, such as a place, event, or literary work, by way of a passing reference. Analogy. It helps to establish a relationship based on similarities between two concepts or ideas. And finally, we have juxtaposition. It is when the author places a person, concept, place, idea, or theme parallel to another. That's it for today. If you have any questions about literary devices, type your question below this video. Well, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you enjoyed the lesson, hit on the like button, please. And you may share the lesson if you liked it. Until next time, take care, bye bye.